Welcome back folks. My name is Brad and you're at Piney Grove, our 20 acres out here in Northwest Florida. Got the Kubota out and I'm getting the chainsaw and my brush cutter ready because I'm gonna go work on clearing some fence line. So let me turn this camera around and show you the tools we're gonna to work with today. All right, so if you watch my channel, you know I'm a big fan of Kubota. So I got the L3901. It's got the five foot king cutter brush hog on the back, but we're probably not gonna brush hog today because we got a lot of uh, actual manual labor hand work to do today. So first we'll start with the brush cutter. In a lot of my videos, when I talk about cleaning up brush for my hunting lease, I got a brush cutter. It's basically a steel string trimmer with a brush cutter blade on it. And this model is the FS55T, two stroke model. And I've already done it, but I tightened up the chain on my steel MS241C chainsaw with the 18 inch bar. And I've got a couple extra chains there as well. Can't emphasize enough, wear safety glasses when dealing with chainsaws or anything out with brush because those wood chips will hit your eye and um, scar them because I, I currently have a scar on my left eye from that. And I have a buff to protect my neck from the sun. Have a headband because it gets a little warm here in Florida. It's uh, November and it's 50 some degrees, but it's gonna warm up. Hearing protection is a must. Then if you watch our channel, you see I'm always wearing these wicking shirts. I got my wicking shirt and then a sweatshirt that I probably will not use. So that's the tools we're gonna use today. A couple of steel products and one Kubota product. This, the Kubota is mainly gonna be used to get my equipment over to where we'll be working. I've got some two stroke gas ready to go here. And then of course, for the chainsaw, I have some chain oil or some bar oil, I guess it's called. All right, so let's uh, let's get over to the fence line and look at what we got there. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is clear out this little path I have that goes to my food plot back here. If you, look, if you watch the video where Deb and I are putting up the deer blind, she says uh, she can't walk quietly up to the ladder of the stand, but she said I probably could, but I'm not a ninja, so. I'm going to go back here and clean up that little bit of brush so that I can get into the stand quietly. Okay, here's the food plot that my stand will be overlooking. We come back here. We had a tropical storm knock down a pine tree, so I took the excavator and cleaned that up. But coming into the back of the stand, you'll see it's pretty, pretty thick and crunchy and just not quiet. In general, just not quiet. So we're just gonna clean this up real quick so I can get in and out of the stand quietly. You can see how quickly that thing works. It just slices through, you know, stuff that's way bigger than your thumb one swipe it's through it and that blade is a year old or so it's had a lot of use it's still very sharp and gets the job done okay you saw me slinging that thing around and that's because every time it touches a branch it'll chop that branch up and there's less to have to move so i just kind of swing it back and forth like a golf club but i basically just don't want anything to hit my clothing, hit my rifle, whatever I, I've got and make noise as I'm walking through here. So got it cleaned up. Okay, as usual, I got a little sidetracked and actually did a little bush hogging up around my parents' house and some other areas. I wanted to do a little brush cutting where there was some shrubbery coming up that I wanted to knock down. So I've been at it about half hour, hour or so, already doing some stuff, but I'm out here on the fence line. You can see how thick the fence line is. So I'm gonna turn this camera around and talk about what we're gonna to do today. All right, so this is the fence line. We're not gonna mess with the fence going this way. Those trees are too big and my neighbor already has a pretty decent fence there. But from here, seven, 800 feet that way, the fence is pretty rotten. So we're gonna start at this corner here, put an H brace right here in the corner. Bella is actually on her side of the property line right now. 
and that's rare when I'm here. But like this tree, it has barbed wire in it, right, all the way up into here. So I'll, I'll cut that tree off above that. Those cedars there, I can just grub them out with my excavator and they'll be all one piece. So there's no sense in cutting them. And then they'll stack easier if they are, uh, if they're not chopped up in little pieces. So I'm probably not gonna do much here, probably nothing here. I get here and like this oak tree, you gotta make a determination. Is this oak tree gonna be worth anything 10, 20 years from now? Or do you just cut it now so you have a clean fence line? And this one, this is a little scrubby one. It's probably easy to pull that stump out. You see that oak tree's right in the fence line. So there's a lot of decisions to be made as I start grubbing out the other side. And we got a nice cedar tree here. Looks like I can run the fence on this side of the cedar tree. So I'll trim those limbs up on the bottom so I can work on it. Here comes Lily, the other neighbor's dog. Hey, Lily. This oak tree I can work around. You see the T-post is right next to it. The cedar tree is kind of in the way, but I can't do too much right now with that because see this fence is falling down and my neighbor has horses and until we get the new fence up, his horses will end up coming over here. Like literally the only thing holding this fence up is this piece of wire to this chain. Other than that, it's just brush there. These cedars can come out, but I'll probably probably just pull the wire. I got to get all that wire out of there. And again, I can't do that till he moves his horses into another paddock. But that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to go down here and pick and choose where we can get some stuff done. And then we'll leave a lot of stuff for my excavator after we pull down the wire. Because we got to get all that wire out first. You don't want that wire mixed up with any wood that you're clearing. So yeah, I wanted to last weekend start taking that wire down, but uh, we hadn't had the conversation with the neighbor yet exactly how we're going to coordinate that. And he's got horses, so this fence, although it may not be much of a fence on video, it's keeping the horses on that side, and uh, we don't want his horses to get out. So we're, he's actually going to move his horses to another paddock once I give him like, you know, a four-day period when I'm getting here with my excavator, clean everything up, and really get it ready for fencing. Because the fencing will go up quick. It's just all this work ahead of time. You know, we got a solid day of, of uh, removing wire, old barbed wire, and it's 700 and some feet. I told him we'd probably do it in like two, you know, 350 foot, 330 foot sections. So that way, um, you know, we'll minimize the chances that the horses could get out. And if they got out, they actually would just end up getting on our property and our property is completely fenced. Uh, in some places better than others, but in every place it's better than this fence right here that we're trying to fix. So, all right, let's get to it. Start up that steel chainsaw and start cutting. Okay, so this tree behind me is what we call a prickly pear tree. I, I don't know the exact name for it, but it's an invasive species. It's got really big thorns on it. I've actually popped an actual truck tire. When we were clearing our front fence line, one of these uh, spikes coming out of these prickly pears actually went through one of my truck tires. So anytime, anytime I see a chance to take one of these trees down, I do. You'll notice that I didn't invest a lot of time in determining how that tree was going to fall. I saw that it was leaning the other way. Most of the weight was on that side. So my undercut was horrible, my back cut was horrible. But uh, I knew that there was a lot of room for error there.
This area will be interesting. The big cedar will stay, the cherry will go, the pine will go, and the oak will stay. But you'll see some of the limbs of the cedar are intertwined with the cherry. So I'm gonna cut off those limbs of the cedar, try to free up that cherry, and then drop everything over into his pasture. Okay, well my chain and my chainsaw didn't start out today very sharp. And uh, it didn't take, I think I hit the fence once and all that wood I'm cutting is pretty dirty. So I've got a new chain here and I've got one I've previously sharpened. I really don't wanna run the new one. I'm in the middle of cutting a cedar tree and uh, that cedar trees, this chain just wouldn't do it. So this is the 241C, oh that's Bella, 241C professional model from steel. And it only has one screw here on the side, unlike most of the heavier duty chainsaws from steel. But like all the professional models, this screw is captivated so you can't really lose it. Well, actually, you can't lose it unless you lose this whole piece. Yeah, she's oiling good. The bar is getting hot, though, because that chain is dull, and I'm not being real friendly to it, so I'm going to give her a break, give her a new chain. I'm going to leave the bar flipped. When I start to feel a little edge on the bar, then I'll grind it off with a little hand grinder. And I'll flip it in the field if I feel it building up a burr. A chain always wants to tangle. It's number one. Rule number one. So no matter how experienced you are, invariably you're going to put a chain on backwards. You've probably heard the term a sharp knife is safe or safer than a dull knife. It's the same thing with a chainsaw. I just cut up a little oaks there. They're just little oaks that are never going to amount to anything. And uh, it was just slicing right through quickly because it's a sharpened chain. It's not a new chain, but I've sharpened it. And it's, I'd say, 70% sharper than the, the one I took off. And that's just slicing right through, right through things. And it's just safer because you're not pushing down as hard. We got one of my neighbor's horses coming over to find out what all the ruckus is about. This is gonna look real nice once there's a new fence here. We're, we're paying for all the material and we're doing all the labor, but at the same time, we wanna be good neighbors. You know, this fence is good enough for my neighbor for his horses so that Bella, the pit bull, only comes over when she's invited, not whenever she wants to. 
And uh, we like Bella and we like hanging out with her, but like I was bush hogging today and when I'm backing up, she likes to bite at the bush hog uh, wheel and that's just too close to the blades for me. So I don't want anything to happen to her or uh, Lily. And uh, when we start getting our Bella, our Brittany Spaniel out here, we, uh, we don't want to lose her because who knows where she'll go if she's got a hundred acres to roam. So whenever there's two oak trees together like this, usually take out the little one and uh, let the big one flourish because the little one just not is not going to be able to canopy with the bigger one infringing on its space. But I was going to cut this until I saw that it's got some uh, white-tailed deer buck rub on it. Rubbing his antlers, either taking the velvet off or it's a signpost. And I'm just not going to do that to the old fella. I'm not going to cut down his tree. I don't keep rubbing on that this year. Take it down next year. I'm in no hurry. The oxen are slow. The land is patient. Okay, a lot of this stuff I can dig out with the excavator if I want it to be gone. And the wire is easily accessible. I guess I could take that cedar out right there. But uh, the next big step is up in here. those big red ants up your pant leg. My neighbor has no desire for this red cedar. What I do? So rather than putting it in the burn pile, I trunk up anything that's salvageable. I trunk it up and I'll throw it on my side of the fence or put it close enough where I can pick it up with the tractor. The fence is so rotten. Can't really lean it on the fence. But that'll give that pine tree some room to grow. Give that oak tree a little bit more sun. Not much farther. Corners up there. That's what I've done so far. You can see all the trees that are laying over here on my neighbor's side. And he's got a grapple on his 3901. And I've got that thumb on that excavator. So I'm not trying to do too much manual labor. I've already got to take off all of that wire. That's all manual labor. Wire cutters. Brute strength because in many places it's going to be buried in these trees. Just a few hours work can erase years of neglect. You know, it's not that hard to come out here with a chainsaw and clean this up, keep your property looking nice. So I gotta cut it up. My saw is getting dull because I hit the wire and I hit a lot of dirt when I cut one of the pine trees down. Trying to be ultra safe there and keep that bar in front of me all the time. Sometimes you got to get it an off angle where on the follow through, the bar kind of puts you in a little bit of danger, but where I can, I'll reposition the wood or reposition myself. But I got it all cut up. It's just when that saw is dull, you really got to push hard on it, or any saw is dull, you got to push hard on it. So then your follow through is exaggerated. And what you want is a sharp saw so that you're only pushing enough to cut the wood and uh, your follow through isn't very much, right? You're just barely pushing through. So then when you go through, you just go through a little bit. But when you're pushing really hard, 
when you go through, you do that, and that's when, that's when things get squirrely, things tend to get dangerous. So uh, I'm not gonna do much more with this chain. That's two chains I've gone through. I started out with one that was a little dull, and this one's gotten dull. It started cutting really good though. But if it's cool enough, cutting wood with a sharp chain is fun to me. Um, the, the, wood, the chain actually pulls itself into the wood. You just kind of lay the saw there and control it. And the uh, saw is always trying to hurt you, so you gotta be careful. You always have to have control of the saw. But yeah, cutting wood, clean wood, that doesn't have a lot of dirt or a lot of dirt in the bark where it's getting the chain dull as you're cutting, but clean wood and a sharp chain, I could probably do that for eight hours, even at my age and as out of shape as I, as I feel I am. Okay, just a, a reminder of where we are on the property. We are on the, almost the tallest part of the property and it is the southwest corner and that's looking down our back or our, or our south fence line and i've got tons of hours invested in that fence line and all i got to do is replace the wire the t-posts are good and uh the, just the wire fabric is bad but um there is some wire there and it does provide a little bit of security here, this is where our, our corner marker is for our property line i came in here and did this h corner and then like the next year this pine tree fell right on my fence here and broke it. I had to repair it. But anyway, this is the fence line we've been working on. You can see down there, you can see kind of where it goes. You can see the T-post. And if we come over here to our side. All right, so this is my neighbor's side. And as you can see, he's got a primo piece of land. His is the only house that was here for years, decades. I don't know, a century, a very long time. Um, and you can see why it is, uh, even though his um, house is burned down, this is pool house there that he lives in. Um, there's a hill there with those big oaks. I mean, that is a primo place to put a house. Um, so whoever bought that or kept that out of a bigger piece of acreage, you know, keeps the high ground and, and all of us peasants get the low ground. But here's the old fence. And I cleared this out four years ago when we bought the property going on four years. And it's just a ratty, rotten fence. I do not know why the horses don't jump it because, I mean, it's just, you can see the wire is rotten. I mean, it's knee height. There's my knee. Here's the top of the wire. When we come over here to Piney Grove side, you can see where my Bahia grass is starting to come in from where I had the bulldozer come through here when we did our land clearing and give me a path all the way around the property. And then for years, you know, we, we hand cleared all this because that was just as thick as that over there. But we hand cleared all this, Deb and I, and got it ready for fencing. Because of everything else we have going on in Piney Grove and in our life and with our job, I mean, I just haven't been able to get to this and uh, you can't really do this type of work when it's 115 heat index. I mean, you can, but you, you know, you drive an hour here and an hour home and do, you know, two hours of work and you're shot. So really got to wait to when it cools off. And right now it's just before hunting season and it is cool enough to do this type of work. So that's why I want to tackle it. I want this done this winter. It was supposed to be done last winter. I just couldn't get to it. But I think I got a, a, a good strategy for how I'm going to do this fence. I think I can stay just one post inside of the current fence. So on my neighbor's side, just stay one to two feet, two feet maybe at the worst. All just depends like around a tree like that. I can get the wire up to it as long as I don't have to put a post there, but I can be flexible with my post because my post I want it 30 feet apart, but if they're 40 feet apart, no one's gonna know. Because of all these trees, you're never gonna be able to like sight down the fence, like our front fence and see if it's truly straight. Cause it's not gonna be straight. It's gonna go around like that big oak tree behind me, it's going around that. I've already got um, permission or clearance for my neighbor. If I have to, to go three feet onto his property and kind of swerve around the bigger trees like that oak tree. Um, I'm gonna minimize that. I wanna minimize how far I move the fence that way. I wanna keep you know, the majority of it where it has been, I guess, however old that tree is behind us. So let's say a century, because that tree is probably a hundred years old. Pick up my steel chainsaw. It's running good. It's, uh, it's not really even broke in. It'll be two years old, but it just doesn't have a lot of hours on it because I just haven't had a chance to use it. 
I had about four steel chainsaws. I'm down to two now. And uh, I was using the heck out of the other ones because they were older and I didn't care if I kind of messed them up. I was kind of saving this one. But they say a steel chainsaw needs a bunch of hours on it, especially these professional models with the titanium, either titanium rings or titanium pistons. But basically they're, they're much uh, more durable saw. So they take longer to wear in. And uh, they say it takes quite a ways, quite a few tanks of gas. I forget what the, I actually had to get a hold of steel because this saw had issues and I talked to an actual steel engineer and uh, he said, you're not gonna realize the full potential of that saw and you know, as infrequently as you use it, you know, for a couple of years, but I can just feel, you know, it revs up quicker now and um, it's just got a lot more power. It's a nice saw and it's light. That's the reason I got it. That's the reason I don't have a 261 is because uh, this saves a couple pounds off a 261. I could take that cherry tree out, but uh, the cherry tree isn't really interfering with how the fence is gonna go up. I gotta get the chain, get this big cedar over on this side, kind of stack all this cedar up somewhere. And I know that's got at least one piece of wire in it because there was a piece of wire sticking out of it. But uh, I'll take my chances with my Alaskan chainsaw mill and try and get some cedar boards out of it, or I will get cedar boards out of it. It may cost me a chain, but that will be something one day. Okay, folks, I think I'm getting ready to wrap this thing up. I got a little bit of mowing to do with the Kubota, but it's two o'clock and I've got to go to work tomorrow. So I'm going to do about an hour mowing and get on the road. But hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I'm glad I was able to make some progress on that west fence line. I got a few hours in there and then I also did a couple little chores around the, around the homestead here. If you like today's video, please click that like button. It really helps out our channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care, y'all.